Okay, so getting back to my original uh, topic, which Dr. Chapman signed me to, I'm definitely conflicted here. I'm going to stay away from, uh, you know, pushing one system over the other. But for me, having done um, lateral and you want to call it MIS, um, you can, for the last decade, you know, it's really, it kind of encompasses a bunch of things. Um, and for me, it's interesting because I think when I started doing it, we really didn't really understand it. Um, and uh, this is kind of what people propose. They say, well, it's less blood loss. It's minimal, minimally disruptive. There's not much fluoro, right, which Mark actually just said. Actually, there's a lot of fluoro if you do minimally invasive. But these are all kind of marketing techniques that, the industry will use to try to get you to adopt technology. And then what I found out the hard way is actually, it's none of that. It's, it's actually, you have to know the anatomy. There's this thing called the psoas muscle, which they never teach you about as a neurosurgery resident. And, um, and I mean, this is like urology stuff and orthopedics. They don't teach us this in neurosurgery residency. I mean, the only time I can remember that I saw the kidney was when I was doing a shunt and it was like some complicated disaster with, you know, we were doing a general surgery. Um, and, uh, and so, you know, this is like no man's land, right? I mean, who, who knows anything about what's in the retroperitoneum? None of us do, right? The urologist, this is all urology stuff. So I've kind of learned the hard way. You know, there's the peritoneum, there's the diaphragm, there's this thing called the lumbar plexus, um, which is pretty important. And again, I mean, you, you think of any complication, I've had it. Um, and you can have it. You can have kidney injury, you can have a pneumothorax, you can have a hemothorax, you can have major vascular injury. You can uh, go through the peritoneum, hit the bowels. So um, again, uh, for me, this is, uh, Shane is actually working on some of this stuff now, is that we really don't understand the lumbar plexus. And if you look, I'm going to show you some nice illustrations. Even the, the um, atlases that we have, none of them are correct. You know, they're, it's kind of like the brachial plexus. They schematize it so you can pass your test in medical school, but it has no relevance or functional, um, you know, significance into the procedures. Um, so again, I mean, this is not this is not reality, right? This is a cartoon. This is from I think um, uh, Netters, and it's a little fig figure schematic. This is not real life, right? But you learn. This is how they teach us in medical school. Um, but this is the, how it looks. This is actually Shane did this. This is what it looks like in real life. So he's taken away all the vasculature. He's taken all the muscles away. That's a mess. You know, try to go through that um, minimally invasively. So um, the, the real anatomy is what you see there. Um, and again, these are kind of the schematics. And if you're going lateral... This is, they take away everything that you actually run into when you're doing an approach. So, um, you know, it's good information. And then, uh, again, there's vascular structures, there's, there's ligaments, there's, there's um, uh, um, veins. Um, and uh, this is just some work that Shane has done in the lab. And uh, uh, basically, he put um, some, we tried to identify what the nerves look like under fluoro. And this is kind of what it looks like. And this is a lateral shot. That looks like the, you know, 405 freeway in L.A. You know, try, try going through that. Um, and again, for me, uh, it's really, you have to kind of know, if you're going to do lateral surgery, you have to understand the lumbar plexus. So... The companies all try to sell you their retractor and, oh, we got the greatest cage and, you know, it doesn't matter. This is the only thing that matters when you're doing lateral surgery. So this is a dissected cadaver. And again, you can see if you're close to the lumbar plexus or if you think you're close to it, you're not going to be able to retract it much, right? I mean, it's kind of a fixed structure. 
so what you have to do is you have to create corridors and um, and and we've sort of outlined so there's the so the pink there is a disc and the orange and but you can see that if you're going to do something laterally it's there's really it's about the lumbar plexus um, and uh, uh, if you're going to do something like this you know you have to consider many things right so the lumbar plexus in and for trauma um, uh, usually you know you're dealing with thoracolumbar junction so you now so you got to worry about the diaphragm you don't want to get in the chest you don't want to nail the kidney. Um, the lumbar plexus isn't as much of an issue, but I think for 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 me, um, doing a lateral approach for someone like this who's morbidly obese, um, they tried doing a kyphoplasty, then they they did a um, posterior instrumentation, and she still failed. So you, this is a great case for a lateral, but it's it's difficult, right? I mean, it's not easy, and hopefully today in the lab you guys will be able to try to see what the relationship is between the diaphragm, the peritoneum, and the chest wall. And um, most people will try to go behind the diaphragm, behind the uh, pleura, or stay in the retroperitoneum. The other thing I've done in the past is you start low, you make two incisions, the, the old school way of doing this, you find the retroperitoneum, and then you bluntly dissect up, and then that way you know you're not getting in the chest. Um, this is what we did. Obviously, we went back um, and did a posterior fixation, went two levels above, two, two below. Um, but I think, you know, for patients that have difficult anatomy, this is a good approach to be able to offer someone. Um, and, uh, again, um, it's not an easy procedure. I'm not trying to, you know, convince you guys that minimally invasive. There's tons of fluoro, um, and you really have to know the anatomy. Um, and again, uh, this is another, so um, uh, just to show you the, uh, the diaphragm and the dome and kind of the relationships between the vascular structures, um, this is what it looks like kind of from, from an outside-in point of view. And, and you can imagine if you're doing thoracolumbar junction, it's easy to go through the diaphragm as well. Um, and then uh, here's another typical depiction that you'll see in some of the anatomical textbooks. And then again, here's some cases. Um, I think we're going to talk about some of the indications, but you know, clearly this is, this is something that we commonly see. If, if you think they need to have surgery, um, doing a lateral approach is not a bad way to do it. Um, uh, you can see uh, we did this laterally. You can do it. Either do it lateral first and then posterior or posterior and then do a lateral. Um, and uh, this is a case, so the case on the right is Dr. Chapman's. Um, you can see there, he's got a traditional kind of open procedure. There's about five surgeons in there. And then, he, and then, <laughs> and then you can see there's my exposure. Um, uh, I think this is one of the cases that Ali did when he was here. Um, you can see very small exposure and you can see how large the patient is so you know I don't think I'm not going to try to sell that this is the this isn't the procedure for everyone but for really large people um, and the bigger you are the bigger the retroperitoneal space is right so there's more fat and and so for thinner patients it's actually a little bit more difficult but you know the companies have all done a good job they have all these fancy retractors. They have all these cobs and drills. Um, and uh, again, you can, I think, for patients that have poor bone quality, you know, that you run into like this, um, and I think Mark talked about this last time, you know, just because you do this minimally invasively doesn't mean you, you, you're not going to find the pedicle. So that it's the same way that you would do it open. You find the pedicle, you, you go back, you find the dura, you, you decompress the central canal, you know, none of that's any different. You're just doing it through a tube. And usually what I do is I actually will, if it's thoracolumbar junction, I will actually drill, I, will, I want to look towards the cord when I'm doing this. You don't want to be looking towards the chest. Um, you want to look exactly, so you're on the patient's abdominal side looking towards the spinal cord. And when I do, the, when I do cases like this, I want to drill all the way across and go to the other pedicle 
and make sure that all that the dura is decompressed because um, if you don't you can you can push that bone fragment backwards too so you kind of have to try to um, you know do it just exactly as you would on an open and again um, the companies have all done a good job they all have you know their own light source um, I typically will use a microscope when I do a case like this um, and uh, you'll see in the lab today the retractor position is the only thing that matters so if you're going to have a small uh, you know opening you have to spend it's pain in the butt sometimes but that retractor has to be absolutely perfectly placed because where the retractor lands is where you're going to end up doing your decompression and then and then doing your doing your fusion. And typically, what I'll do is I'll I'll do a discectomy at the level below, a discectomy a level above. I'll use like a little box cutter, take out the disc, um, and then uh, and then go and position my retractor where where I'm going to decompress the bone. That way, you can take all that. Uh, bone that's um, retropulse. And again, I, I think if you're going to start doing this, I would recommend, obviously, you have to understand how to do basic, simple lateral. Then I think, you know, doing something like L1 or T12, um, understanding the relationship between the diaphragm and the, um, the retroperitoneum and, and the thorax. Um, and then as you get more comfortable, I think you can try to do this. I've done, I've done a, a number of L4. You know, those are the most difficult levels. Um, this is an L4 corpectomy. Um, and again, on these cases, if you're in, the, in low lumbar spine, retraction time is everything. Okay? So if you're in there for two hours, that patient is going to wake up with a deficit doesn't matter you know what your neuromonitoring does so you got to be quick you got to get in and out um, and uh, this is a case I did uh, I think it was for um, it was a uh, pathologic fracture and you can see you put a large cage in there but you really you got to you can't spend three three or four hours uh, doing something like this um, this is a great picture of Jens Chapman that I found um, and uh, this was, I think, in Texas. And Dr. Chapman has a very extensive, thanks to his wife, I have a very extensive collection now of um, early uh, pictures of him as a resident. And he actually was in a band as well. So we'll show you some pictures later. But I thought this was a great picture. Jens. <laughs> <laughs> 